You're listening to The Political Insider with Bill Ballinger on MTN. Here's Bill. We have returned and we are privileged to have as our guest Senator Michael McDonald of the 10th Senate District, which I believe covers Sterling Heights and Macomb Township and a big chunk of Clinton Township in Macomb County. Is that correct, Senator McDonald? Good morning, Bill. Uh, yeah, that's correct. I've got all of Sterling Heights. I've got all of Macomb Township. And then I've got everything north of Metro Parkway in Clinton Township. Wow. Now, you, recently you had what you called a tele-town hall. Now, we've heard of town halls. We've seen presidential debates in a town hall setting. What was the te- uh, tele-town hall like? I mean, how did you set it up? How many people participated? How did it go? Would you want to do it again? Tell us everything. Yeah, te- technology is great, isn't it, Bill? It is. <laughs> it, uh, it, it was actually it was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I think the cool thing about the tele-town hall did you attract so many people to it? It's so accessible for everybody. Uh, I think they said I had 1,200 people on at one point, and uh, I like to do as many as I can, and I like to even go longer if I can. I, I thought it was a blast. So how long was it? How did it last? It was about a half hour. So did you get a lot of call-ins from people with questions? Actually, it was about a half hour. To, it was actually more like 45 minutes, and I think I like to go an hour if I could. <laughs> Okay. So your next one might be longer than the first, huh? Yeah. I'd, I'd like to, you know, because you know what it was? It was our first one, so we were kind of getting uh, used to it. And I noticed I had a lot more questions waiting. And uh, I think next time I'd, I'd like to go as long as I can, actually, like even maybe a little bit more than an hour. Yeah. I mean, how do you even make uh, a satisfactory answer? In some cases, very complex issues. How How can you squeeze in an, you know, an adequate number of people trying to reach you and give them satisfactory answers in a short time span. It's really tough. Well, it, here's the thing about me, too, Bill. I, I like to learn about other people. You know, and a lot of people are shocked by that at my coffee hours and, and at my town halls that I do is I'll ask a lot of questions about you because it's about you. It, it's really more about you than it is about me. What, what do you do? What do you think? And people are taken aback by that. And I, I genuinely want to learn about people. And to do that, you, you do need a lot of time. And, and, you know, I love asking questions to people. I love asking them about their lives, what they do for a living, you know, what are some, some big issues that they have. I don't think people are used to that. And I, I can get myself caught in conversations for a, re- a real long time just because I'm interested sure. in people. I think you got a great attitude. That's the way to do it. Uh, probably these people are dumbfounded. They figure they're going to get you, and they're going to hear the senator get up and give a speech about himself. And instead, well, not, you're asking all the me. questions. You know, I represent a group of people. It's about them. It's not about me. You're absolutely right. Uh, in 45 minutes, how many people do you think actually got through to you that you could address? As I recall, I, I mean, it probably we probably went through 10, 15 questions. That, that actually we were answering. So the, the way it was organized, which was kind of cool, is I'd have two or three people call in and, and ask questions, and we go through those. And then I'd read survey questions and have people vote on them, like take a poll. Right. So I, I'd ask a, a question, give a multiple choice, and say, you know, do you, what is most important to Michigan, uh, the economy, the roads? And then they'd vote on them, and then I could discuss the results of that poll. So were you, that, that was a lot of fun to kind of ingratiate that into the uh, town hall. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, how did were you online? How did people access it? I mean, how was it set up technologically? Kind of like a radio show. You know, not being in that in that industry, I, I would imagine it was similar. We had uh, call screeners taking the questions, and then um, the, the way it was for me is I was in my office and I was had access to my computer, and it would show uh, about five questions that got through and I would choose which one I wanted to answer at that point. And I would try, I would try to vary, you know, I wanted to touch on everything. So if somebody was asking the same question, I I would go to another one. Were you like on a telephone or were you just uh, sitting in front of your, uh, you know, uh, computer screen and seeing the questions and just talking like we are now? Yeah. Yeah. I was on a landline. I got you. Well, I mean, that, that's, I think a great idea. How often do you think you might do these? If you expand them to, let's say, an hour or more, uh, does it take a lot of work to set this up? uh, Or do you think as time goes on, it's going to be pretty easy to repeat the process? Uh, It takes a little bit of work, nothing too extreme. I I like to to do in-person town halls and tele-town halls. So 
you know, I, I'll talk to my staff about that and see what would be the easiest for, for us to organize. But, I mean, it would be great to be able to do both every month. I mean, that, that would be ideal. How did you get out? I'm, I'm a face-to-face kind of guy, too, so I like the face-to-face. But I, I like the idea that more people have accessibility to me with the telephone home. So when these people were on, they could actually see you on a screen while they were talking to you? No, no, just over the telephone. Over the telephone. Yeah. Uh, well, how many other senators have done this that you're aware of? Do you know of any others that are doing this? I know Senator Lucido did one. Okay. Um, I'm, I don't know who, who else specifically, but I do know he did one. Right. Well, okay, tell me a couple of other things you've been interested in. Strategic Air Command or something to that effect in northern Michigan, you were very hopeful about something like that being developed in Michigan. Where have you gone with that? Oh, we're, we're, we're rocking on that at the, uh, the Michigan Launch Initiative. Uh, there's, there's actually quite a few updates on that. We have our uh, second-year space symposium coming up in Traverse City on the 9th of September and the 10th. And the keynote speaker will be Breitenstein, who is the head of NASA. So the whole country is focusing now on, on Michigan's op- economic opportunity here with launching the low-Earth orbit satellites. Uh, the money's been appropriated for that. And uh, here's the kicker to the whole thing. We're, we have the advantage over all the other states in the country, primarily because all the other states in the country are trying to use federal dollars for this, and we're using private, meaning that the licensing process for us is going to move quicker. In fact, the FAA says that we're pretty much the template for how to do this correct. Uh, we also have all the geographical advantages for this because if you're going to launch the low Earth orbit satellites, you're going to want to do it where there's enough restricted airspace to do it. Also, it goes back to that north of the 45th parallel. It's simply cheaper to launch them from Michigan. So you, you don't only have companies wanting to throw money into Michigan to launch satellites. You have the entire Midwest kind of uh, forming a pack wanting to launch them in Michigan and you have other countries that want to come here and launch them in Michigan. So as the auto industry transitions into a tech industry, I see an opportunity to basically take full advantage because if they're going to try to do autonomous vehicles, it won't work without the satellites. And if you're going to launch satellites in Michigan, might as well make them here too. Is that why you think Michigan is the focal point for all this? I mean, there could be anywhere in the United States something like this could be development. Why Michigan? Um, no, actually, that's not correct. The coastal states have had sort of uh, have had this for a long time, but the reality is, with the defense industry's involvement, Michigan is in a much better position than they are because we're not vulnerable. Um, also, as far as restricted airspace goes, the other states don't have that. Oklahoma had attempted this and completely failed because you can't launch satellites in landlocked areas because the, you can't do it over where there's there's high populations. Michigan has all the advantages of the coastal states with none of their weaknesses. And we have a manufacturing background that none of those states have because of the auto industry. We, we literally hold all the cards in this. Did you any get any questions about this subject in your Teletown Hall? Um, I usually tie it just to my jobs. Uh, th- this, this will provide over the next 20, 30 years trillions of dollars worth of jobs. And, and let's be honest, the issue with the roads is it's a revenue problem. And this would address that moving forward. This would be Henry Ford 2.0. I got you. Listen, we could talk about this forever. Thank you so much, Senator Michael McDonald of the 10th Senate District in Macomb County for being our guest, giving such a great overview of his Teletown Hall and his plans for a strategic air command in northern Michigan. Thank you, Bill. I'd love to be on any time. We'll get you back.